forward, he's a member of the University Board of Trustees. So look out upon you, I wonder, who among you someday As a member of the Board of Trustees and President of the McKendry University Alumni Association, it is my honor to welcome you to the McKendry family. 25 years ago, I sat where you are today. As a first-generation college student, I was filled with excitement, anticipation, and also feelings of doubt and uncertainty about McKendry and my future. I'm sure many of you have some of the same feelings today. I welcomed you to the McKendry family, and you heard President Dobbins talk about the McKendry family, and, and we use the word family for a reason. As a student, I quickly learned you could find support from your fellow students, but also the faculty and staff, the professors, staff, and alumni all care about you and are all here to help you grow into a successful person who cares about bettering themselves and society. And now you are part of this historic family. While four years may seem like a long time, it will pass very quickly. I encourage you to enjoy every moment of the McKendry experience. McKendry is a close community, and your contacts here may affect the rest of your life. Your new friends could be a future CEO, a Grammy Award winner, or your future spouse. My wish for all of you is that you become so entwined in the life of McKendry that you become unable to think of your life without thinking of this campus, the history, and the many experiences that will enhance your personal being. My grandmother was always willing to give free advice, whether I wanted it or not. Now as an attorney, I'm paid to give advice to my clients, but like my grandmother, I'm going to give you some free advice today, whether you want it or not. First of all, challenge yourselves. Take every opportunity to learn all you can. You're not here by accident. You have worked hard to get here. You are attending a college of distinction, an institution recognized for excellence in engaged students, great teaching, and successful outcomes. And now, all McKendry has to offer is available to you. My second bit of advice is to get involved. Your college experience is not just about academics, it's also about self-discovery. There are numerous opportunities for campus involvement, including athletics, student government, and community service. Participating programs sponsored by the Alumni Association. It gives you a great opportunity to connect and network with the best and brightest of our alumni, as well as meet other members of the McKendry family that can help you along your journey and give you advice on aspects of your career path. Finally, develop a good work habit that includes desire and determination. Some refer to this as your grit. Grit is determination, resilience, self-control, and your ability to begin a task and continue it through setbacks and disappointments. As we go through these interesting times and you work through these challenges, you are developing grit. You are setting yourself up for success in life. 25 years ago, I started my journey at McKendry. My education and life skills learned here set me up for success at one of the top law schools in the country. McKendry set me up for, for success as an employee in the workforce, and now as a business owner. Every generation has its own struggles. Every generation has its own set of challenges. While many of you were not born yet, 9-11 happened while I was in law school. COVID is happening now. There will always be challenges to face, and McKendry will prepare you to face those challenges. Because of everything McKendry has given me, and soon to you, remember to give back with your time and your talents, pay it forward so the Bearcats of the future have you to thank. May all of your hopes and dreams be realized during your time here, and may your connection to McKendry that begins today last throughout your entire lifetime.
Welcome to McKinley. Hello, my name is Tammy Eggleston, and I'm honored to serve as the provost at McKendry. And I am going to start off today with kind of a special surprise. There are many things that make McKendry University such a special place, but the main reason is simple. It is the people and the connections that you will make while you are here. You will make connections with your students, you'll make connections with coaches, but what I really want to celebrate right now is the connections that you will make someday with the faculty who are sitting on the side of you right now. So I know that you're like, why do I have to give them a round of applause right now when I don't even know them? Let's go ahead and give them a round of applause because they're working on so and all their right now. I've been at McHenry University since 1996. It was my first real job. I had many other jobs, but this was my first real job. And I have thought about leaving over the years, but there's something that just keeps me here. And what keeps me here are the special connections that I have made with students, faculty, staff, and the alumni over the years. And I know we keep saying that this is special and magical and maybe right now you're like, I don't know what that is, but give us a little bit of time and you're gonna feel that special purple magic as well. I really want you to look over at the faculty who are seated on the side of you and they're on your side because they really are here to support you, to push you, to help you grow. These individuals will be your teachers, your mentors, and perhaps eventually even your friends. Today we're gonna start off with a surprise that doesn't happen that often, that we are going to be giving some special awards to a faculty member today, and this is truly a surprise. So at this point, I would like Dr. Lauren Thompson to please join me on stage. Yes, Lauren, I said your name. She's looking like me, so Dr. Lauren Thompson, please join me. Some of the students out there, maybe you have history, and if you do have history this semester, you are fortunate because we have Dr. Shelley Lemons and Dr. Lauren Thompson, two of our many amazing faculty members. But today, Dr. Lauren Thompson, who might start crying on her way out here, she's been at McHendry um, since, for, for six years, seven years. Come on up, yeah, she has come all the way up. She was just awarded tenure last year, and she also just got married. And now, at this point, based on information from the Board of Trustees, it is my honor to award Dr. Lauren Thompson the Samuel Heading Deneen and Charles Samuel Deneen Memorial Professorship of Early American History. And this truly is a surprise to her, as you can tell, but she is most deserving. So please join me in congratulating <laughs> I told you it was a surprise. I, I love surprises. And seriously, if you have Dr. Shelley Lemons or Dr. Lauren Thompson for history this semester, you are in for a learning treat. So you would think that one surprise is enough, but I love surprises. So I've got one more. At this point, I would like Dr. Brenda Boudreau to please join me on stage. English. Today she will be awarded the James M. Hamill Chair of English. Dr. Boudreau has been a full-time faculty member since 1998. She is the senior most member of the English department. Dr. Boudreau teaches courses in English literature and composition. If you have Dr. Boudreau or any of our amazing English faculty this semester, you are also in for a special treat. But Dr. Boudreau will push you and she will be an amazing friend to you. So I hope you're fortunate enough to be Dr. Brenda Boudreau, our newest endowed professor. Woo. So that was a 
really special moment. And I know some of you are going, really, you're doing this now? I've been holding on to this little bit of information for a couple of months, and I can hardly stand it. Every time I'd see Lauren and Brenda, I'd say, are you coming to convocation? Isn't convocation amazing? So now, now they know why. So thank you for joining us. And again, I hope that you will get to meet some of these amazing faculty members. At this point, it's my honor to get to introduce to you one of our amazing faculty members named Dr. Ann Collins. Dr. Collins always says that she has the best job at McKendree, and I actually believe her when she says it. She always says that. She today has the honor of speaking to you because she was the winner of the William Norman Grandy Faculty Award this past spring. The award is given each year to a full-time tenured faculty member on the Lebanon campus who is an outstanding teacher, and certainly Ann is. It is truly one of the highest honors that a faculty member can receive from the McKendry community. And among the prizes for winning the Grandy Award is the opportunity to address the new class of students at this convocation. Please join in welcoming Dr. Ann Collins. Oh boy, y'all might want to turn this down. I'm <laughs> to be here today among the very first to welcome you officially to McKendree and to the adventures that await you over the next four or so years. The last time I got to speak to an incoming class, the class of 2019, way back in August of 2015, I talked about the running of the bulls, friendship, and public unity. We might circle back to some of those, the kind of the goals in public duty. But I definitely want to talk to you. I want to stress the importance of friendship to you, as well as preaching to the chickens and staying untamed and wild during your journey here. Every summer, I try to step up my reading for pleasure. This still includes a lot of politics, of course. I do have the best job here on campus. I get to teach American politics. But I venture into other topics as well. Lately, I've been drawn to books about people navigating life. One of the books I picked up this summer centers on the life of civil rights champion John Lewis, who, when he was just a bit older than you, spoke in 1963 at the March on Washington, and then later became a member of Congress. When he was a child, John Lewis's primary chore was to tend to the family's chickens. They had a lot of chickens. He and his family also attended church as much as they could. And these two facets of his life eventually merged. And he began to preach to his literal flock. He loved the chickens so much that he engaged in his first act of nonviolent protest on their behalf. When his parents killed one of the chickens for a meal, he refused to eat it. Good trouble, he would eventually call those acts. Those chickens were his friends. It was during those days, historian and biographer John Meacham asserts, that Lewis learned self-giving love toward others. And Lewis himself later reflected on the experience with those chickens as vital to his development of discipline responsibility, and patience, all essential life skills, including in his role as a social justice activist. So, I want to urge you to preach to the chickens while you're here. See us as a friendly audience, your flock, so to speak, where you can begin to practice and prepare for your life's work. Take classes that you think might have nothing to do with your major but probably do. And by the way, American politics relates to everything. Take that, Sarah Trask. <laughs> Go out on a limb. Take chances. Be open to new experiences. Y'all, I got my first tattoos this year. I got catty. <laughs> Take your chances. Be vulnerable. Get naked. I told you we'd probably do that. Oh, and by the way, I do care to sit on the third cat statue. I think someone in the class of 2019 took me literally on that one. 
Use this time to develop skills that you will carry with you throughout your life. Effective communication, clear writing, critical thinking, empathy. I also want to encourage you to lean on your friends. You might not know anyone here at the moment. No worries. When I first arrived in 2007, I didn't know anyone. Now I have many close friends who I know I can turn to whenever I need help or small things, or even something truly life-altering. Human connections enrich our life. Find your people here and help each other thrive. Also, be sure and take advantage of all the resources here to set yourself up for success. Your McKendry friends and family, your professors, your coaches, the spectacular staff, and our administration, we want to see you succeed. Visit with the wonderful folks at Holman Library, the Writing Center, our tutors, the Student Success Center, our amazing counselors, our magnificent chaplain, Red Bed, and our wonderful healthcare workers who keep us healthy. Nurture your mind, your spirit, and your body during these next few years and feed your soul with friends. Yes, bless you. But let me also suggest to you that this journey that you are on is ultimately yours. You'll have family and friends along for the ride, of course, but you are the one blazing the trail. Tap into the strength that got you this far. Obviously, we see something in you. What do you see in yourself? Two books that I read for pleasure last summer stress this theme, Untamed by Glennon Doyle and Wild by Cheryl Stray. Both stories center on life falling apart, but then finding the self-love and resiliency to forge ahead. And here's a spoiler alert for me, someone decades older than you, your life is going to fall apart at some point or another, to various degrees at one point in various parts of your life. It may not be while you're in college. You might have moments when you feel like it. Heck, to a certain degree, we've all been experiencing life unraveling over the last year and a half. These are unusual times. You've already proven that you can navigate life during the pandemic. Look at the next few years as an opportunity to grow, probably experience some setbacks, but then come back even stronger. Forge ahead remembering to lean on your friends. And by the way, my office is in Pac-203 if you need a friendly Texan to lean on. Don't think you have to have everything figured out right now. Some of you will likely change your major once, maybe twice, maybe more. You might think you're going to major in A, B, or C, but you know what? There's X, Y, and political science. <laughs> I declared a certain major when I started college that lasted exactly two weeks. It took me till I was a junior to figure it out. So be open to new possibilities. Study abroad just as soon as you can, as soon as possible. I studied in Salamanca, Spain when I was in college, the first time I ever left the country, almost the first time I left Texas. Do an internship. Mine was in Washington, D.C. Register to vote, and then vote. We have a polling place right here on campus. How convenient. International students, tell us about your country. I love having y'all in American politics. How does ours compare? Have debates over the best way to address the critical issues facing our world today, and then act. Be engaged, Bearcats, get into good trouble. At the end of your time here, when you walk across the stage at graduation on this front lawn, how do you suppose you will have changed? What chickens will you have attended to? What friendships will you hold dear? And by the way, you might be surprised to learn that just might include some of your professors. What reserve of inner strength will you discover? I hope for you that the next few years are some of the most rewarding of your life. 
what a great adventure you are about to embark on. Welcome to campus. Welcome home. Let's do this, Bearcats! Alright, we're going to fast forward. You guys look a little bit warm. Uh, I think you've heard the word family. I think you've heard the word be successful. I think you've heard the expectation of opportunity. The ring is there for you to grab. Uh, if we need to refresh the course later on, we'll find it. Uh, I do think Dr. Collins probably filled up all sections of her classes uh, for the spring term. But next we're going to reenact an age-old tradition in higher education, the signing of the matricula. Each of you new students is a matriculant, one who is enrolling in college, and we recognize that officially at this time. This tradition has endured since the earliest days of higher ed. It signifies your formal acceptance into this academic community and becomes an official part of the history of the university. The matricula, with your signature, will be maintained in the university archives in perpetuity. Should you ever visit the university later in life, you will, you will be able to find your signature in the matricula that you sign here today. So we'd like to begin by having the first year band students come up and sign the matricula. other new students will be directed to come forward in lines to sign the matricula, which will be witnessed by faculty, staff, students, and alumni, and then return to their seats. I would offer that as this is a solemn ceremony, uh, we ask that we try our best to maintain quiet um, during the activity. Thank you.
another tradition, we'll join together and sing the school fight song. I've heard that some parts of the campus has already had the privilege of running the fight song. So we'll look for some leadership from the football team, the volleyball team, band, and some others to uh, guide us through this process. Um, the words are printed in our program. I know there's a history where the prior president, I think the record was how many, 15 times? So little, little expectation in terms of participation. So we're just we're going to raise the bar a little bit. So how are we going to start this? We have two amazing students here going to join us. I'm looking for them. There they are. There they are. I'm looking for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.